Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and therein he meditates. Therein he thinks about all day long. This is what I, this is what I want to do. I, I want to do what the word says. I, I want to put this into action in my life, in my job, at my work, in my school, in my neighborhood, with my family. I want to take these things and this is what I think about, what I ought to do. This is where I find my counsel. Well, Ray didn't do that. We're going to find. Ray was anointed as king over all Israel. Ray, that's Rehoboam for long. Ray was Solomon's son. Evidently, there was no, no other pretenders to the throne in the family, although he had so many wives and concubines. I imagine he had quite a few sons, too. And yet we have no record of anybody else fighting Rehoboam from the family for, you know, uh, to be king. But it says in verse 41, Now the rest of the Acts of Solomon, all that he did is wisdom. Are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? Which, unfortunately, uh, did not survive to this day. So we can't look up that book. And the period that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. And then Solomon rested with his fathers, was buried in the city of David, his father, and Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his place. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone to Shechem to make him king. This is it. This is the big coronation. So it happened when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it. He was still in Egypt, for he had fled from the presence of King Solomon and had been dwelling in Egypt, that he sent and called him or that they sent and called him. Then Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now, therefore, lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us, and we will serve you. So he said to them, Depart for three days and come back to me. And the people departed. Things don't change very much. Basically, the people are saying, Look, we'll let you be king. We'll elect you king. If you ease up our taxes, if you don't put such a heavy burden on us, we'll vote for you. Politicians, that's the promise of a politician. Every politician I've ever heard to get elected. I've never heard a politician say, if you elect me, I will raise your taxes. Of course not. And it was no different back then. And that's basically what they're saying. And that's why Jeroboam is out front. He had seen the way that they had used all of this stuff for all the opulent stuff of the, of the uh, judgment hall and the palace of Solomon and so forth. He said, look, you know, we're, we're working like crazy out in the fields and we're paying for you to live in luxury. Ease up. Give us a break. And Rehoboam's not too smart because he says, well, give me three days to think about it. To think about it? Well, he didn't do much very good thinking. Didn't do much very good thinking. I don't know if we can edit that out. Uh, I don't know. Leave it in. Everybody knows I'm not perfect. In case maybe they were thinking that, but of course not. Then King Rehoboam, verse 6, consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived, and he said, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, If you'll be a servant to these people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him who stood before him. And he said to them, What advice do you give? How should we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Then the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Thus you should speak to this people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, huh. I will chastise you with scourges. Now, how do you think that went over with the people? Just as you imagine, it didn't go over well. And the rest of the chapter describes how it went over, where they basically said, that's it. What have we to do with you, Rehoboam, son of David? What have we to do with the house of David? Forget it. We've got Jeroboam, and they go and they anoint uh, uh, Jeroboam king over them, over the northern tribes. And Rehoboam's left down in Judah. So we've got Jerry up north and Ray down south. And Jerry up north does some things and takes some counsel that we'll see in a minute.
But Ray still doesn't believe that his counsel that he got from his buddies isn't going to work. And so he sends the IRS out to collect the taxes. And instead of collecting any taxes, they stone the guy to death. And so Ray gets in his chariot and hightails it down to Jerusalem to hide out, realizing that they really meant it. They're not putting up with this. They're not putting up with this.